Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. And I am Zach Burrell. And uh, before we get started, I do want to say I apologize for the audio. I'm going to have to fix some things um, as we moved into a new po- uh, new place. And so uh, we'll just go ahead and get started. So I asked... Yeah, a new Choco Bros table. So I asked uh, on Facebook, again, one of those Ask Me Anythings. I just returned from the Lightning uh, Crystal Cup, which was amazing. Congratulations to Matthew Okimoto, and congratulations uh, to all of the, uh, I think the top nine people are now qualified for Nats because we had so many people qualified already that the invite passed all the way down to the ninth place. So that's pretty cool. And also, you know, I do want to point out that that says a little bit about um, the limited portion. If the top eight people or the top five people were already qualified for nets that says a little bit about um that it takes a little bit of skill right (laughs) um anyway so we're going to go ahead and get started with the questions that were asked i'm not going to do them in any particular order just the order they came in so they might be rehashed a little bit um so we'll just start with number one (laughs) (laughs) correct are there any art deck archetypes that previously were unplayable that will rise in the meta as a result of the data luma ban Probably some Durian of Fire. Something something with fire or... De- uh, actually, take that back. Lightning Wind. Hmm. They have a better cho- or a better option because it's very... Usually it's damage combo-y, like Orlando Cactor type Sure. Stuff. Sure. But I also wonder if... If Mono Water will get even better in which Lightning Wind will continue to struggle even further. It's super um, aggressive, though, so it can possibly could take be. advantage of the, weak, the, the weakness could be. I, or something like that, so aggro. I haven't really liked aggressive decks against Mono Water since they started playing three Veritas, three Cagnazos, Layla Sorry. Vikings. Yeah, so um, I'm going to answer, well, and I think this ties into another question later on, but we have Opus 9 coming around the corner. Um, so if Opus 9 wasn't coming out, my answer would be yes, but it would take a while. Um, but since Opus 9 is coming out, the answer is almost certainly is not. Uh, yes, it will, will definitely change. Um Next question. <laughs> What's your take on our friends from UK and other places having such an elitist attitude towards NA players? Also, will you be attemp- attempting to attend the summoning the summoning event in Vegas? Um, I will start with the second part. I will not be attending the summoning event in Vegas. What I think that? it's super cool. It's the Meta Potion uh, event. Um, and so it, it's the Meta Potion event in Vegas. It's November 9th. It's going to be a, I'm sure it's just going to be absolutely insane. Um, but I was pretty much planning on judging um, Arizona and then attending nationals um, to be kind of like the rest of my year. Uh, I was lucky enough to get a sponsorship to go to Gen Con. So I am going to Gen Con, but that still means I have to pay for my food and all this stuff. So it's even more money. And then if I do qualify for Worlds, um, I need to plan around uh, that trip to Worlds. Now, Worlds is in November, and I'm not allowed to take off any days between November 1st and December 24th. So if I want to play in Worlds, they're going to have to make an exception for me to take off. And so I certainly couldn't get uh, also get off uh, another uh, weekend in November. So that is my answer. Now, to answer the first question, um, do you want to start with that one, Zach? <laughs> Uh, can you reread it just to get the? What's your take on our friends from the UK and other places having such an elitist attitude towards NA players? If you're going to critique plays or criticize players, at least provide what they're doing wrong and a re- and what they could have done differently. Don't just say "lol, you're bad," or "lol, I want to kill myself," or any other series of things that I've basically seen in every stream ever of any event. Right. It's it's like super. If, it's like if you super want to toxic. be, if you want to prove you're elite. Give an explanation. If you don't think people are worth it, eh, well, screw yourself. Right. I mean, so just because, um, just because, like, Toby or Alex came from the UK, I mean, congrats to those guys for being world champions. But just because they came from the UK does not mean that you're as good as they are. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, you don't get to stand behind those two people and be like, yes, we're the best. Um, Again, there's all kinds of reasons why NA has been behind, um, but we are catching up. Um, 
and so I just, yeah, I think the elitist attitude does need to stop. I think it's kind of part of the culture, and I don't mean it in a negative way because I've just, I've had European people tell me, like, this is just how we are. We're kind of brass, you know, um, we don't mean it in a negativity. Like, we, we don't mean it, like, all in all seriousness. Yeah, but you and I but, are the same way. We're abrasive with people we're friendly with. Like, you used to be really yes. aggressive with Angel, and he, he would always laugh about it, and that's fine. But, right, like, and what we're seeing now is not the same but thing. But none of it is constructive. I, correct but, or but rather we're constructive about it or we're like they're not serious but everyone else seems so serious about it and it's not constructive when it correct comes and to i overseas, i think seems. i think the worst part of it actually is that there is all kinds of crazy shenanigan misplays going on over there so much so that we had like the same player do like four different things wrong in a single tournament all of which every one of which was caught on stream and in that case when I tried to bring it up and talk about it, people just told me, it's sorted. Don't worry about it. Don't stress it. We handled it. Did you handle it? I don't know. Also, players making a misplay in a tournament, blah, blah, same misplay in another tournament, they were quoted as saying, this is the worst thing I've ever seen on stream when they did it previously. Do you care to mention names or no? Do we want to mention names? Eh, we'll keep it nameless. They know who they are. Yeah, so... Yeah. So let's move on. What changes do you think need to be made to the rules and the judge program to stop future controversy and what can be done to bring the most distant parts of the community together as there seems to be a bit of a divide between our certain communities as of late. So between certain communities as of late, we know what the communities are. Um, we just talked about it. <laughs> what do I think needs to be made to the rules and judge program to stop future controversy? So a lot of things. You're deeper into that one because you actually are judging events and you just got done judging one of our largest events of the year, the Crystal Cup. So, Right, yeah. Um, Not that I want to appeal to authority here and say you know everything, but <laughs> I think you're in a better position. No, I think, that I, have a, I think I have a good position on this. I think that I come from a competitive mindset. Um, I, I live with three people who play the game very passionately but also very casually. Um, I'm part of the judge program. I talk with the judges in the discord. I'm, I'm good friends with Richie. So I have conversations about where I think the game's going. So I think I do have a good perspective, not coming from a, you know, argument of position, but I think I am well-rounded in my position. Um, and I think in order to stop future controversy, I think there are a few things that need to be made a little bit more clear. Now, when I first started playing final fantasy, one of the things you kept hearing is that the game is kind of casual. It's kind of casual. It's meant for casual, but we've gotten more organized, um, over the years we're on our second or we're in our third year is that correct or our second year october 2016 is when the game came out but like tournaments didn't really start until the following year spring summer okay events that so matter, we're, anyway. we're on our like our second year right and i'm i'm going on my uh first year my, my almost my second year competitively um and i've seen things greatly improve since it started um so we're just gonna need to keep improving um a lot of that change has come through player vocalness um and being vocal is a good thing being an asshole is not so there is there is a difference um you don't have to be an asshole you can be vocal um i do think that there needs to be rules in place that are governed by square enix hobby japan and the judge team um that govern things outside of play such as player harassment death threats which we've we've seen uh, randomly appear here locally in our local scene of all places um and those types of things need to be governed we've seen um jokes that are out of character out of line um a lot of people compare it to magic and they say well in magic this would happen in magic this would happen first off all those people that are arguing in magic for example the the instance with the five infilia he would have gotten dq'd that is not correct um not only do i think not only do i know that that's not correct but i also talk to l5s and L4s and Magic Community, I called them to kind of verify, hey, how would this be handled in Magic? Just so I could get a reference point. And they all agreed that this is how they would handle it. Uh, they had some different nuances. The um, that game they, loss with uh, some kind of, what's the... Can, like, it would be game loss. Basically one strike away from DQ. Like Correct. Kind of elevated, yeah. It would be game loss unless they could prove intent and there would be investigation and, and that type of stuff. Um, and if... And if the Minfili was an important enough card, you could consider the possibility that it was on purpose. And I don't know how I feel about that um, because it's really hard yeah. to say what's an important enough card because one, Van Crit is probably the stickiest threat and the best forward in the deck and he was missing a Van Crit. Um, so I'm not arguing that that's 
Oh, he's missing a forward for a backup. That's pretty bad for the deck too. Like even if you hit it off the experts, having being down a right. forward in that deck for a backup. Well, being being down what I think is one of the best forwards in the game, um, or at least in that deck, the end crit is very sticky, very annoying. Um, of course, the backup that he was down isn't even the best backup either. It's also the second best backup. Um, you know, like one of the jokes Most is why not five? Well. Why not? Min Min uh, Minfilia was the backup. Oh, no, no, no. What's the one he had? One last. Oh, time. he was missing a krill. But what I'm saying is that, like, you know, if play, if you're playing five of something, Alice is the way to go. Um, so what do There's I think? An argument that like the experts and all that, but sure, no, I I completely agree. But it's all besides the point. I'm just trying to get at the point that people say this is how they handle it, magic. This is how they handle it, magic. Well, in magic, they also um, police the social economics of the game. Um, you can't just go around bullying people and threatening them. Um, you, you can't go around making memes and making fun of people because you will get punished by the DCI. If you guys want to go down that road, I'm okay with it because I think what's happening is disgusting. Um, I think it's uncalled for. I think looking back to when like, see, I'm, I'm a stronger player. When the brawn thing happened um, and they talked about the earth brawn and then like Chris Matiski made the earth brawn, I didn't get offended. It was funny. I totally get it. But here's the thing. That's how I took it. I'm 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 okay laughing at myself. Other players aren't that way. I knew that I'm in the public spotlight. Um, I've I've, you know, I've made myself the public spotlight by being a judge. I made my public spotlight by doing well at Crystal Cups and events. I've made it here by being in a, a podcast. So you know what? I deserve any type of heat that comes on me because I put myself in that spectacle. Um, the player in this situation did not. They don't deserve, um, you know barring that we prove that they meant to do it they don't deserve the kind of hate that they got um, now on the on the uh, question of proving intent though and looking into kind of more about the nuances of what the actual situation was sure what is your thought process when you consider the fact that call judge on himself which is a good sign but okay you know what let's but, let's if we're going to talk about it let me just tell well, everyone a, the exact okay. story and then, and then I'll take your question because I do want to say what happened so that it doesn't get outlined. So what I'm about to say is exactly what happened. Um, and there's there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no different d disagreements. There's no possibilities that anything else happened. This is not just for my interview with the player, but my interview with the judges, the opponents, um, friends, everything. Okay, so this is exactly what happened. Um, going into the second to last round, um, the player in question... Uh, played a card that searched their deck. This is on like turn two. There's nobody around them. There's no judges watching them. No one's sitting next to him besides the people that are playing their own match. He searches his deck and he immediately says, ah, oh, shit. Looks at his opponent, who happens to be a good friend of mine, Zaim, and he says, I gotta call the judge. Yells, judge. As he's waiting for the judge to come over, he lays down his Zion's deck, spreading it out so that not just Zion, but anyone that's paying attention can now see, and points to the Minfilias. Says, I don't know how this happened. There's five Minfilias in my deck. Okay? Judge comes over. Um, player is visibly in tears, very shaken up. Um, I didn't know this at the time, but it comes from a TCG where if this had happened, there would have been a DQ. He would have been dropped for the tournament. So he believes that calling the judge on himself here has actually just disqualified himself from the tournament, but that it is the right thing to do. Regardless of whether or not he really thought that is not not for you or I to decide. Um, but the fact is, is that nobody knew that he had these cards in his deck. Okay, He did call the judge on himself. And further, any imbecile idiot out there who thinks that he called the judge on himself this round to get it out of the way because he was already locked in is just too stupid to think that he would have just did it prior, right? Like, like you are you just won round six, or I'm sorry, it was seven rounds, right? So you just run round five. You're going into the sixth round. You just switch the cards back. I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not incentivizing or telling anyone here that they should cheat because I don't think that they should. That's what true. I'm saying is, is it doesn't make any sense not to switch them back prior. Stop arguing that he could ha that he only called the judge because he was locked in. No. If you want to argue that he for sure, at some point, as a Suns player, had to have noticed that he had that many 
Menphilius Pryor. That's that was on gonna you. be the second part of my question. Yeah. Is, okay, and, and that's on you. you. I, I, I can't tell you. I can tell you that it's certainly not impossible and that the odds are probably less than 10%. Um, but I've rolled a, I've rolled a one on a 20 sided dice. So I've hit the 5%, <laughs> right? You know, like this, this stuff happens and I'm not saying that like, it's, it, that's what happened. I'm just telling oh, that, that that's what may have happened or that he may have been cheating or whatever. Or he may not have been cheating. I'm telling you the facts as they are. The judge came over. The judge thought that, he knew the right decision and then because it was such a huge infraction decided that he would himself appeal that decision defer that decision to rb um who was also judging at the event richie got a hold of um the situation and richie concurred that that was the right decision according to the rules as they are written now if you think the rules should be changed great i'm right there with you if you think the rules should be changed in the middle of an event, <laughs> exactly, I'm I'm yeah, not there with you. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, no. The rules are as they are, and Richie went about and made sure the the rules, the, the way it happened, was the correct way. Yeah. So, what what happened after that is that I did an investigation. I interviewed both the judges, the players around. I interviewed Zaim. And I interviewed the player in question. Um, that being said, what comes to the interview, what comes out of this process may or may not become public knowledge, but the investigation certainly will not be public. We will not ridicule the person. Um, there's no reason to grab your pitchforks. I will conduct my investigation. When I'm finished, I will submit my what I think is a decent report to Hobby Japan and Square Enix, and then they can do what they want. Um, my opinion aside, I will leave my opinion out of it. I will simply just present the facts. And that is all that you guys on Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you are reading and hearing about the story should also do. Stop saying things that did not happen. If you were not there, in fact, no, no, if you were not one of the judges or Zaim or the player in question, you don't know what happened. So stop spreading misinformation. This is what happened. So... Now that you know what happened, I just want to clarify, and not, not for you personally, Zach, but because, as you know, I've seen so many people on Facebook claiming things that did not happen, and I want to make sure that we know what happened. So now that you know what happened, what were your question? Uh, it was, I think, pretty much fully covered by that. It was going to be the, uh, uh, da, 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 yeah, the, so the fact that you called it there, but you're right, you could just swap it before day two and be fine uh, yep. overnight, uh, which is yeah. fair uh, if you were if you had that intent. And B was, how the hell as a science player do you not search your deck enough to realize, like, that's a card I would be counting. Like, I, okay, I've yeah. got one in here, one on board, or not, if it's not on the board yet, or EX or whatever, I'd be kind of counting around. But un I understand un unlikely. some people don't, yeah. But. Unlikely for that card. Um, for Yida, <clears throat> for maybe even Alice, um... yeah, cause that card just ends up happening. I yeah, guess. that card just so. yeah yeah and, and like if your plan like dragons I'd count them your yonder sure, but like if your plan is to break something killing it with Menphilia like that takes two turns to set up and you have to play the Menphilia like that's not something you're waiting on. Yeah. Um, maybe you count your ex burst to see what your chances of the attack coming through hits in the ex burst, but that's very unlikely to show you when you count them. You know, because you're only when you're counting them, you're only looking at your damage zone. Your like I wonder if there's ever a time there were two in the break or two in damage, one in break, one on field or something, and like very, all, very like, possibly, so, yeah. very possibly. But anyway, and, all this we, we just covered. Let's move on to yes questions. Okay, the next question: Where do you see the future of the game going? We have the judge program now. What do you think the next step should be? The next step in the judge program should be a hierarchy of judges, um, so that we can continue to report this type of stuff. We can monitor and maintain it. Um, the issue is, is that we also don't want, every, you know, it's just different. You know, I will say that it seems to me that there are different, um, there are different level, not different levels of judges, but different. Um, let's just say there's a whole lot more judges outside of NA than there are in NA. I think we're being a lot pickier in NA, but the point is, is that like, given that anyone can take the test and anyone can become a judge, I don't want the information so that they can use that to make people feel bad about their mistakes out there to everyone. So I don't want this report 
um, this database accessible to anyone. So I would like some sort of hierarchy in judging, um, some sort of way to keep this as a, a system that protects the integrity. Um, the future of the game, I think, demands it. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, for, for a while, I will say this, for a long time, the player base has been the backbone of the game. Um, that's no slight against Hobby Japan and that's no slight against Square Enix. It is just the way it is. They're competing against the Giants, the big three. And a lot of a lot of their survival depends on um, their consumers, their players, uh, you know, players like us, their judges, um, content creators like us to keep this game promotional, keep it, keep it alive. So the future of the game, I think, really rests in how we treat it. Um, what about you, Zach? Uh, more aggressive administration when it comes to scheduling events and getting secured dates further ahead of time. Absolutely. That's my biggest concern, my biggest problem as a working citizen who needs to schedule vacation time and all those sorts of things, who has to buy plane tickets because I can't teleport. <laughs> like, sure. Just more ahead of time. I know that's in the process. I know it's a small team. Yep. So I understand the blockades, but there are also solutions that I hope are pursued. Sure. Let's keep it going. We'll just go and try and keep the flow going as fast as we can. In your opinion, what do you what what do you feel a few more cards or do you feel a few more cards deserve to be banned? No. Brandis Opus Nine is about to be around the meta may slightly change. So you said no, right? I mean there's the argument for Zidane, of course, but I'm gonna argue yes. I'm gonna argue a ton of cards. I think Shantoto, I think uh Zidane, I think Diabolus. Um you know if you look at the cards that are printed, it's very clear, and, and I know that they've never confirmed this, but it is very clear when looking at the cards that there was some sort of rotation at some point planned, right? You look at the card and you say, there's no way that that card should have that name, right? It's just not going to see play. Um, and had it had any other name, it would see play. It makes me very, very certain that at some point they figured that that would be the card with that name in the format at that time, Okay. Maybe something like Celeste or Locke, although the Celeste is seen play, but you, you see what I'm saying here. Um, those types of cards, their name really matters. Um, and I and think they're that, playable if it wasn't for the better earlier version. Sure. So I think that it was very clear that we were going to have a rotation. Now, they've never said that, but what Kageyama did say at the fanfare was that they considered it Mm -hmm. And then they decided to go with bands instead since they had just made a ban. Now, that does make sense. Like, we've banned some cards that made the format unhealthy, so maybe we don't need a rotation, right? But I think that their rotation would allow a lot more, a lot, a lot of other cards to see play. It would allow the metagame to kind of be shaken up. Um, and so I do think that if they're not going to rotate, I'm okay with that. But I do think there needs to be more bands. And the bands are the cards that are just absolutely changing the way the game is played right now. I think even cards like Maria, Waka, um, Lulu, those types of cards could see ban um, to kind of improve format diversity. Um, cards like Valfor certainly should be ban banned. Not that I don't love the card. I love the card. Um, but yes, those cards could be banned in order for us to see a shakeup. Um, all right, so next question. Dis disregarding incident this weekend, which is hard to disregard, by the way, <laughs> Do you feel Square Enix needs to look into rules more in depth for higher caliber events, i.e. Nats and Worlds, or in case something like this happens again? Yes. And I will tell you that while I can't, I'm not even privy to the exact details, I am privy to a little bit of the conversation that's happening, and they are in fact doing this. They are in fact looking further and further into this, into rewriting the rules, um, into looking at these types of things. It should be no surprise. Like this should not come as a surprise to you that Square Enix cares about the game and they care about what you're saying. If you are paying attention to the types of things that are coming out, that are being revealed, that are that are changing about the game, it is very obvious that Square Enix is listening, that Hobby Japan is listening, and that they do care what we have to say. So the answer to whether or not the rules need to be more in depth for higher caliber events, absolutely yes. And they will be. Um, we're, you know, this this game is still growing. I get it that we are in the backbones of giants. I agree, and so it's maybe some of this needs to happen sooner. Um, but again, this is exactly how it would have been handled if we were at Magic. Um, so, 
I, ha- I really cannot stand seeing that comparison one more time because everyone who compares it to magic, like myself, I do it all the time, at least needs to have a fundamental understanding of how they do things in magic before they before they say something. I've, I've seen people that say, oh, I'm a judge in magic. They would be instantly disqualified. <laughs> uh, I am scared that you're a judge in magic. That is not how things would be handled. Um, so let's keep going. What's the likelihood of a Crystal Cup coming back to Boston or clo- or a close by state? And what's the no most idea. likely? What's the most likely cl- uh, card to get banned? Um, I don't know. <laughs> probably somewhere, probably in New York City. Probably Boston was awesome. I would love to go back to Boston. Oh, Boston would be sweet too. Yeah. So yeah, let's let's. I mean, I don't know. I don't have any type of no knowledge. Um, if you want events to be in Boston, make sure you show up to the next Crystal Cup. And since the Crystal Cups are we look three like LQs the... out, by the way, no, okay, they should be soon though. Um, since the um, if you want, you know, support your LGS near Boston because since we are having uh, Crystal Cups, almost looks like it's almost indefinitely at least for the you know this season. I don't know about next season, being at stores. Then we need to look into making sure that the Boston stores are doing a fantastic job carrying the game. Uh, what's the most likely card to get banned? Uh, yes, Matt. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Or Porum. I don't know. Zach, what do you think? From the new set? No, I just think those cards oh, are nuts. Oh, okay. Um, Z- Zidane's a fine I mean, answer. Zidane's like, I mean, that's my easy go-to. I don't like talking Valf- about Val- Val- Valfour is also an easy one. All right. How does it feel being in the judge role and not sitting at the table when there's a world's invite on the line? And the time and chances of running out to secure a slot. You know what it feels like? It feels like I should go to Gen Con. <laughs> In fact, I didn't consider Gen Con that seriously until after the event, until after watching my friends play in an event where they had the chance to do this. Um, but how does it feel? It, you know, it feels good. It feels good. Um, yes, it sucks that I didn't get to play, but I got to basically you know help run a crystal cup um and i feel like i really i I didn't just improve as a player improved as a person i improved as a member of the community i improved as a judge um i i just i I really just feel like i i rounded myself out this particular question comes from a member of the a uh, uh of australia who wants to judge but also they have very limited chances to make worlds so i completely understand Uh, I'm going to tell you that you should judge. I think it is just fantastic. And I think that we need um, better judges and more judges out there. So, you know, I, I decided to go with like a, I'm going to do about 50% of the events in NA as judges and 50% as um, qualifiers. So maybe you can do the same, the same thing for Australia. That would be my answer. Um, Zach, I think that eventually at some point you're going to take the judge test if I'm not mistaken. (laughs) Uh, most likely, yeah. It just seems like something that you would do. Um, what would you do? Would you be interested in judging? Would you, or would you play in every event you could? Um, it would probably if we continue having mixed format events, it would depend on what those mixed formats are and how the uh, environment turns out. If we start getting rotation, I may look into do, doing more judging than playing. Uh, so there's a lot of sure factors. Fair enough. All right. In a similar vein, how do you justify is it worth giving up the chance? Um, That's in regard, are you planning to step away from the competitive play in some measure to be a judge? The answer to the second part is no. I plan on kind of splitting my time 50-50. I think that it is worth giving up the chance. I think that I learned a lot from playing and watch, I mean, not from playing, but from watching the best players um, on the stream all the time. I did not see a single person play who did not make a mistake at some point during the game that I felt like after knowing their hand and everything or that I wouldn't have played differently. And I feel like a lot of the players made plays that were much better than I did. And so just seeing the game from a different perspective and seeing how the game rolled out, um, most of the, the plays, um, the, what I felt like were the high level plays that I disagreed with were the way that they played their first few turns. And most of the times I disagree with them, they did get punished. Um, and I thought, wow, if they'd just done this, they would have been a much better situation. Whereas in the late game, they seemed to make a much different decisions than I would have. And they almost always paid off. So it's just, it kind of makes me re-examine the way that I play my late game. And it does make me feel good about the way I play the early game. 
Um, so if you're looking to become a better player, I would say that judging is going to pay off for you. Do, so the do answer. You know, do you know where you stole it is now? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I mean, you're still going to make those mistakes. Um, yeah. I mean, he had he had the know, he, he he had the met the characters and played the turn before. It's the reason that I missed it. It's the reason that everybody missed it, Be- because one or two people caught it on YouTube, and then everyone's acting like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe they missed it." It's like, well, yes, we are watching for it, but you know what? You're watching for it too, um, and most of you missed it as well. Um, not to say that it's an excuse, but I am saying that people are human. Yeah, I was just trying calm to you your ass down, people. Um, <laughs> All right. Do you think there should be a point tracking system to track players for the purpose of seeing the players that are pro ones that have multiple LQ or CC wins would be considered pro? Well, to be considered pro at anything, really, uh, a professional is someone that makes money doing something. Um, and to make money at this game currently, not technically feasible. I mean, not, not, mate, I get, you can, you can, yeah, you I mean, can try to say not yes when you all factor, you want, but when you factor you have in to, travel costs and accommodations, right? And you have to. You can't right, make, exactly, you can't and you can't, and you can make money possibly, but you're not making a living. Um, no, you're making a small profit if you can find people to buy your winnings because you're not winning money. Bingo! There you go. Yes, yes, and yeah, you, you have, have to be to, constantly so, doing well. So you have to put in more hours and more grind. You just can, to sell you can make money at one event, but you're not making money overall. Um, yeah. Do I think that you should be able to make money overall? Absolutely. I love the pro tour or what used to be the Pro Tour in uh, Magic the Gathering. Um, possibly for the future, yes. It just depends where we go. I mean, this game is clearly, hands down, better than Magic. I haven't met a single person that liked Magic over this game. A ton of friends of mine and a ton of people that I've met used to play Magic have now played this game, and they think that it's the best game. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to make money, maybe go play Magic for a little bit if you're, that, if you're on that level. If you're looking to have a really good time and just play what is, I think, hardly like even close to a, a much better game than just you know play this game don't consider going pro though um eventually maybe that could be a system not yet we do need to iron out some of these things first um i don't think a full know. living should be a thing but uh maybe half would be nice yes with the ability that's to fair yeah. yeah that's mm, i mean yes I, ideally a full living but yeah that's like way out in the future i right? just no <laughs> i just personally don't think that should be a thing for card games i think you're still oh. but oh, okay or unless you win every event, then okay, you deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> right. okay. um, what got you into the FFTCG and why? Um, and we were already a fan of Final Fantasy series before this. I, I've already covered this in other podcasts, but I will cover it real quick. I got into uh, Final Fantasy by playing Magic at my local qualifier or my local stores, and I love to use tokens and play token-based strategies. And I saw some Final Fantasy packs, and so I kept buying them to eventually I was going to open them and use them as uh, tokens. Uh, I saw a bunch of people playing the game, so I decided, you know what, I'm going to open these packs and build a deck instead. So that's what got me into it. I, yes, I love Final Fantasy prior. That's obviously why I bought the packs. Um, Final Fantasy VII is one of my favorites. Final Fantasy IV is my favorite, probably right alongside of Final Fantasy XV. Follow-up um, question. Do you wish Final Fantasy had any sort of token system? Awkward silence. <laughs> yes. Eventually. Yes, of course. Not yes, forward, should, though, right? Like, that'd be way too powerful. Nah, no, like in Opus like twelve, like Kefka should be able to spawn monster tokens. Like that would be sick, right? Like at the I mean, beginning of your I turn, would, I would love it. Put a one thousand power monster into play. Yeah, that would be sick. Yeah, if you could choose one element to stick to for the rest of your FFTC career, what element would it be? I think I would choose wind. Not because it's my favorite element, but because it seems to get the most love. And so, if I'm going to have to play one element. I just have a faith that they're going to continue to give win the best cards. So yeah, that's what I would choose. Um, who is your favorite FFTCG player and why? Um, doesn't matter how well known or not. Who is my favorite FFTCG player? Why? Wow. I think that obvious. The obvious answer is my wife. Um, <laughs> no, nah, well, of course you knew it. Like what? Chill. Who, how, chill. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, who is my? No, I think they want a more serious answer. I mean, that is the honest answer. But if I had to like Outside look around personal yeah outside of your household i guess would be yeah man that's that's so tough right i think that it might it might be it might be a few people um man what a what a tough question do you have an answer for that question uh it's a trap it's a trap (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I I think it's somewhere between for me. So there, there there's like there's like there's like the old favorites and the new favorites. The old favorites, uh, my two favorite Final Fantasy players, probably maybe of all time, uh, Kyle McGinty, um, and and Dan Wynn. Um, I just followed them from the very first days when I was just uh, playing at my LGS and just following the online list, and I just love their decks and I thought they were really cool people. Um, you know, now I think that my two favorite players, not that those guys aren't cool, they're still they're still dope as shit. My two favorite players, probably Brian Berkeley, um, definitely one of them, and then I would say Amethyst also, um, Amethyst Row. Um, those two people, anytime I see them in a tournament, I'm rooting for them. Um, I love Brian. She's one of the nicest guys out in the world. Amethyst is such a grinder. I see her like driving across the country everywhere she goes. It's like it does not make sense how many miles she's put <laughs> on her car for this game. Um, so those are two of probably my favorite players right now. So I don't know, Zach. Do you have a do you have an answer to that? It's a hard question, right? <laughs> I abstain. No. Uh, if I had to pick like just a handful, because I can't just like say one person. Um, yeah. Oof. I have. I, hmm. I mean, Sam Tools up there for me. Yeah. Oh, that's a good answer. Uh, Chad. It's a good answer. Um, we're getting like away from like local people though. Yeah. Alejandro. Yeah. Just like the people that's I know. That's cool. Honestly. Yeah. I, I definitely so. put. I definitely was thinking about putting Alejandro as like my number one, but like I felt like it was too obvious like i want to put alejandro and then you and jamie it's like those are and Zayn, those are all well, obvious there, picks. let's be honest <laughs> no you def- you're, you're definitely up there if, if you weren't up there i wouldn't choose to do this podcast with you <laughs> you know like i'm not gonna do this podcast with people i don't like that doesn't make any sense i don't get paid for this <laughs> um who is your biggest fftcg rival and why Ooh. i have two answers so for that the i the, the by results gregory cole for, oh, you think for me, Gregory Cole? Like, by results. By results. In terms of, like... No, I mean... Gameplay stuff. I'm curious no. to see what you say, I guess. I have a couple ideas, but... I like Gregory Cole. I don't think I see him even as a rival. Like, I just like mean when like, I go to a tournament, like, I'm not out to beat him. Right, right. I just mean, like, ironically, by results, whatever, however you want to phrase it, because he just like, keeps knocking you out with those two Yeah, that's... Right, yeah. Um, I Okay, I'll, I'll give two answers. I'm willing to explain one, and I'm not going to explain the other one. Um, but I, I think the other one, they know why. Um, ah, maybe I shouldn't even say that one since we're not editing this podcast. We decided that we were going to get this one really raw, and we weren't, we weren't going to edit it out. Um, so I will, say, I will say the one is – the first one is definitely Jim Doolittle. Um, Jim is a rival of mine because our games are always very close. There's always, they're always very tense. But it's a very healthy rivalry. Like I love Jim to death, and I was super happy that he qualified for nationals now. Um, and so, yeah, that's not like an unhealthy rivalry. If you think that rivalries are unhealthy, I don't think I have any necessarily. Um, I have a few players that consider me their rival because they just do. Um, but yeah, I don't. You don't, I don't, you don't know. consider Oki up there. Um. No, like not, two of not the necessary. biggest faces of the game in the United States. <laughs> I almost consider Oki more of a teammate, actually. Like I work, I, I, I talk to Oki every single day. <clears throat> Literally, there's not a day that goes by that I don't talk to Oki. Um, so not not necessarily. Like I, if Oki wanted to know information about a deck, I would tell him. If Oki wanted to know what I was playing, I would tell him. Like, whereas like with Jim, like I look forward to competing against Jim. He comes. He's one of those people that plays those random rogue decks. And I like that. Like, and so to me, like Jim is just the more fun opponent to play against. Not that Oki is not fun to play against, um, but you know what I'm saying. Like, me and Jim, me and Jim have a record of very close matches, um, and and even so far as you driving all the way to Atlanta and him knocking you out from getting nationals qualification, like also puts him on my rivalry. You know, but it's a healthy rivalry. I I love Jim to death. I'm excited to see him every time I I, I travel to an event. So. I think that's my biggest rival. Um, there's one other person who I would consider a rival, but I didn't really until I found out that they were always kind of rooting against me. And like, I don't know, they're just kind of a dick. So 
you know, I don't normally root for people to lose. And I can honestly say that this is the one person I could care less if they do well or not. It's like, whatever. Everyone else I'm, usually, I'm generally rooting for. Um, you know, like, even if, even if, yeah, I mean, you bring up Okimoto. Like, if Okimoto's in the tournament with me, I want him to win every single round that he's not paired against me. <laughs> so I don't think that makes him my rival. Although I, I want Jim to win. I want, I, you know, okay. But then I don't want to get paired against Oki. Whereas it's the opposite with Jim. I want Jim to win every round that he's not paired against me. And then I want to play him. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's fun. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I guess Jim, Jim Jewel is my rival. Um, I love you, Jim, but yeah, you're going down next time we play. <laughs> Do you have a rival? Uh, maybe, but not off the top of your head. We'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> if you if you can, if you can choose one card that must be in every deck, you make one. All right, it's for Soya, and and now, fine, it's both. <laughs> well, no, it's, that's it's, for me. That's my answer. Oh, every time I don't new... play Shantoto, I get punished for not playing Shantoto. And it's Maybe it's even the new Fasoya. All right. What is an idiot warning, and why do you got to do me like that? That question, I am going to call him out. That came from Zayim, and he got an idiot warning because while I was telling everyone to write their their names on their deck sheets to turn in for when they're registering their limited deck. I stood in front of him, looked at him and said, make sure your name is on your deck list. Zaim walked away, collected deck lists of 32 deck lists that were turned in. Only one was missing a name, <laughs> but he was also missing a deck name. So his deck name became idiot warning. So that's why I did him like that. <laughs> um, no, I didn't actually give him a warning. I did give him several cautions, though, um, throughout the tournament. Uh, why do you think the community is so closed-minded when it comes to spoilers? I see comments of this and 90%, 99% trash. This is testing is, before any testing is done. Do you think we need to be more open to explore outside the box when looking at cards? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. People and just because... Think the, the <clears throat> yes. Opus 9 is actually just insane. It's so good. And on top of that... If you think that something's bad just because some player that you respect says it's bad and then you repeat it, you're the worst. You're <laughs> the worst, okay? Not them. You are the worst. Think for yourself. Opus 9 is not bad. Like, and you have seen less have you than read what... Porum? Have, have you, you read Porum? Have you read Yes, Matt? Like, you, have you read the new Fasoria? Like, you've seen less than 30% of the set, okay? Like, I calm down there. That now, hasn't it? Isn't it? We're like halfway there? Well, well, listen you, you think you've seen half the cards? No, we've not seen half the cards. I thought we did. Anyway, I'll, I'll maybe maybe we have. Either either way, either way, they're wrong. <laughs> and here he goes typing up the German website. <laughs> yep, that's exactly where I'm going. Okay. Um, yeah, I think people need to start thinking outside the box. People need to just stop think thinking things are bad before they try them. All right, let's keep powering through. Would you play? Would you rather play a simple but consistent deck or a more advanced deck with a bigger payoff when the pieces come together? You know, I need that question too. What? Zach would rather play an advanced deck with a bigger payoff. I'm right there with him. Um, we have 90 cards from the set. How many cards are in the set? Are, uh, looking at the dark. So we have over we have over 50%. 90 out of 75 percent Okay. So, but we still have a lot of really good cards that are printed. And a lot of cards that are printed are good. Um, so I stand corrected. We've seen like over 75%. But you know what? Like those cards are good. I like the cards. Have you read Zolera? Yeah. Well, some people think it's trash. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, continue. The, the point is, is that, yeah, like stop bandwagoning. And also, here's, a, here's another thing. Stop caring. Don't care what other people say about a card. People really honestly thought Zagnot was a terrible card. And it's not. It's a good card. It's a good card. It has to be in the right deck, but it is a good card. If you've ever faced against a Zagnol, you know. It's a good card. And it's a scary card to be staring down. So start thinking for yourselves. Um, but anyway, do you, would you rather play an advanced deck I, or a consistent deck? I'd rather play an advanced deck. I have won every tournament that I've ever played a consistent deck in. So as you can tell, I don't play very many consistent decks because I haven't been winning lately. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when, I, you know, when, I, when, I, when I play just the best decks, I do very well. I need to just stop playing these advanced decks. But there's so much fun. Right, I mean, yeah, we've talked about this before in similar ways. Right? Yeah, similar I'd rather, I'd much rather play the more advanced deck and have a good time. I like to respect uh, myself at the end of an event. 
What card? Yeah, exactly. What card from Opus Nine are you looking forward to test? Um, I'm right there with you with Porum. Um, I also think the Fasoya is sick. Um, so I don't know. Probably I'll not Porum and Fasoya in the same deck. But... Do things maybe. Hopefully, I don't know. Sure. Why not? That card is sick too. Also, new chocobos are pretty sick. Yep. Uh, who that is not part of cards released? Would you like to see the world spot? Uh, Me. I want it. I... <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I, I, I want to see, you know, it's funny. I'll say I kind of want to say Zach, but I also think it's pretty unlikely since you've kind of had to make some world world decisions that, you know, haven't given you enough chances to compete for it. So if you do well at Gen Con, I, I, I'd be super stoked. Well, there's still spots open. So do those people not deserve it? That, that's how I feel about myself. Is I would not okay. have failed in the events that I failed in. You, you hear that, Zaim? You do not deserve a world spot. <laughs> Zach. I am saying in Seven the events nine, I played in the situations I was in. PM. <laughs> in the situations I was in, I, I could have done better, and I didn't. So, What are your thoughts on the negative chat comments that's usually directed towards any players? We already covered this. They're toxic. Stop being assholes. What can a player do to improve when, it's, when he is unable to attend events locally? Um, Octagon is a decent podcast. answer. Listen to Chocobo's podcast. Listen to RBA podcast. You know what? Here's one. Listen to the Indie Archfiends podcast. They are brand new. They are awesome. Check them out. Um, but listen to podcasts, but also play on Octagon. Play friends. Get your wife into it. Get your husband into it. Get your friend and get your roommate into it. Get your daughters, your sons. Get your dog into the game. Figure out a way to play the game. Um, figure out a way to solve the game. If you really want to become good at the game, you can. Stop making excuses about not being able to play locally. There's ways to play online. There's ways watch to events. watch video. Right, you can watch events. So there's tons of ways to play. Make sure it's EU events, though. You can't watch any if you want to learn. Cost versus benefits <laughs> of buying online versus LGS. Also, is this set worth getting a case for based on what we have seen so far? Yes. Always worth a case if you like foils. If you don't like foils, maybe you can make an argument for not to get a case. Sure. That's a good point. I'm getting no boxes for this set um but it's not because the set's bad it's because i've decided to spend my money doing other things um such a ten as attending um arizona attending kansas was a huge money blow for me i think gen con um if i can want to attend nats so i've decided to spend my money elsewhere uh, i will try to trade or borrow some cards this time around um what about uh cost versus benefits of buying online versus lgs um, you know, I used to say I always support LGS. I don't know if I necessarily if you're L agree with if that. If LGS is going to try to gouge you because the supply is low or something, then screw them, go online. If Correct. They're, it, if they're going to, and if they're willing to put in the work, prices that are right. comparable to online, then absolutely support local games. Not even comparable. Like you can get a boss of, of Opus whatever for sixty dollars. I think you should spend the the, the ninety dollars, which oh, is yeah, a, no, a huge amount of more. But I mean, like yeah. if you're going to sell a. If they're selling you a box for a one twenty five, just buy it from the Square Enix store, okay? Um, well, get your score. Well, you're paying points, whatever. Get your points, okay? You get well, you're points. You're spending one sixty if you go to the website, though. Listen, it doesn't matter. Or whatever, the, my, you, you, you see my point. Like, yes, you should buy from your LGS if they are supporting your game the way that they should be. Um, but I also think that the the game is not being carried by the LGS right now. The game is carried on the backs of the players that play it right now, and if you don't have an LGS to play at, go go to a local bookstore. Um, I'm gonna like Zach knows I'm gonna be hosting drafts at my house. Like I'm not saying don't support your LGS. Definitely support your LGS if they're supporting you. Yeah, we we have two LGSs here. We're gonna continue to support the one that supports us, um, and we're gonna support the other one less um, because they they can't support us. Um, and I should say that they can't very specifically because it's not a choice; it's a corporate decision. Um, well, that's what I mean. The, the company. Could. right and the local yeah, yeah no, we've been through all that. right we're almost through this what about buying one box at lgs to show support uh i think that's fine but i mean i don't i haven't figured I out think your lgs yet so your lgs need, yeah your lgs needs to be selling you singles too in my opinion um if you have um if we can have top 32 doing three to four extra rounds of draft swiss why can't we have top 32 constructed and have them do three or four more rounds of constructed before top eight? So that, instead of, but so instead of doing single limb, do no, no, no. I think what this person was asking is why can't we continue Swiss day two? Like oh, they do at GPs they were cut instead off of, 
right instead of doing a single elimination that we do right now i personally would prefer single elimination um even though i've been eliminated from things like boston and nats but it's because the reason i prefer that is because I, I, I think I, I value the ability to play a best of three against my opponent um, over valuing anything else. That's true. So best of three over anything else. Uh, but I would not be I would not mind if they switched to Swiss. Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, we have two more questions. Or just one more question. <laughs> this actually never this question kind of pats myself on the back, so I'm not even gonna ask. No, what is it? Uh, uh, they they said how does it feel to be such an awesome pillar of the community? Um, wow. thank you for that. But it doesn't. Oh, Zach. Oh, <laughs> I was hoping this would be more interesting. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, it's no. That's that's nice. Thank you. Um, but it doesn't feel as good as you think it does. It's it comes with it a fair share of hate, uh, and uh, being looked at under a, a giant. You know, I was gonna say like a magnifying glass, but it's more like you know, like a the kid with it with a, with an ant. Oh, you that. know, with 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 a with a you know, trying to burn him with the sun. <laughs> ants just trying to build a hill. All right, <laughs> like I don't know. Thank you for that. Um, I think that that kind of covered everything. I think I had one more question um, that was sent in um, at the very last minute. It was a judge question um, that asked me about a type of way that's cheating um and in this way so the rules of the game obviously is that you open with five hand five cards if you don't like it you mulligan to the bottom and you draw five new ones now the rules of the game is that your if your starting hand has more cards than are supposed to be in it you mulligan that hand to the bottom now there's a way to exploit this to cheat and that is you start with your five cards in your hand and then you mulligan them and when you mulligan you draw the first four you det- and you do this quickly, obviously, if, if you're trying not to get caught. And you look to see if they're keepable. And if they're not keepable, you draw two on the next hand. Now, the re- what this does is it forces you that you've drawn six cards. You are forced to mulligan those six to the bottom, and you get to start with a new hand. That seems pretty shady, right? Mm-hmm. That's a loophole. So what I will say this is, is I've never had my opponent attempted it. I've never had my opponent draw four and then draw one listen when you're drawing your cards and when your opponent's drawing their cards draw them all face down do not draw them one at a time okay face down draw five cards count them and then a better term might be deal deal yourself sure good good point good point deal yourself five cards look at them then decide on mulliganing if you deal yourself four cards on accident before you pick them up deal yourself the fifth card it's not that hard in fact, I think every one of us that are my our locals. Rules, shouldn't the rules process just be then, though? Like, if you have six, you shuffle your hand, put one back, shuffle the deck, and then you have to keep those five? No, because that's still you can still exploit it that way. You're still more likely to have a better hand that way. Um, I think fair. that I think I think that if you mulligan, I think there should maybe even possibly should extend mulligans to where you can mulligan, and then when you mulligan again, if you want to mulligan further. You can do so, but by drawing less cards, like in Magic, you know. Yeah, you think that's not good? I don't huge know. Payoff, or a huge like that in this game, that's brutal. Like, yeah, you might get a way, way better hand, and I guess maybe if your second hand was unkeepable, unkeepable. But man, oh man, going down to four would suck. No, but uh, what I was gonna right, say, but, some people. But that's do, on you, though, right? So, yeah, some people do draw six though if they're going first. Right, and that's fine. And they're 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 forced to keep it anyway. But what if they did that, and like sometimes they keep it, or sometimes they. Well, good thing we're good thing we're going to start a tracking system for this type of behavior. Um, if they draw six and they're on the play and they're like, "Oh, I meant to draw five, you just like, "Okay, well, you're drawing for turn anyway. That's your first action. Go." I don't think any judge is going to try to make the mulligan. Right. Um, if they're on the draw and they're doing that, first off, call a judge, have the judge take note. Um, the judge should definitely give them a caution the first time it happens. Um, keep track of it. It happens again in the same event. Um, I would err towards the side of a warning, but look into disqualification are, if we believe it was possible. What, all right, so what's for those who don't know, what's the difference between a caution and a warning? Because a warning is actually tracked. A caution has no. to be as well, but... Cautions are also tracked. Right. Um, but a caution is something that can be reversed um, and does not affect... Um, the, the state of the game. Okay, so when if my opponent attacks with Nostrola and he does not have enough silence to deal 8k, but he has decided to deal 8k and I pick up my thing and I put it in the yard, um, 
that is a caution. If the judge catches it or if you catch it and you put it back, that's a caution. Be careful. Don't let that happen again. If it happens again, the second time will be upgraded to a warning. Now, a warning would be if we didn't notice it and the game passed and we can't fix it, mm -hmm. that's now upgraded to a warning. Um, something that you cannot fix. Drawing an extra card in this game is a caution if you can prove which card it was. Um, the brutal thing in this game is the way that it's way better than in Magic because in Magic, you can't prove what card it is, so you usually get a game loss. In this game, it's like, well, okay, show them the hand. They get to pick a card and shuffle it back in. So, or I think it goes on top. That's much worse. So, so why is it done that way? That's just the way the rules have it set. Um, set. Um, I think that's much better, right? I mean, you it really discourages drawing an extra card uh, because your opponent's going to choose the best card and take it away. Um, if you look at the extra card, the card's revealed and then placed back on top. So I had that happen during a match against Saeem. I don't know if you guys saw it. He was playing against ok Okimoto. He went to draw for Gramps, which was a legal play, but Oki had a response. Saeem went to draw. Um, didn't give him a chance to respond. And then I said, hold on. He gets a chance to respond. And, and Okimoto did want to respond. And I asked, did you see the card? And he said, I didn't see it yet, but it looked like he may have seen it. I was pretty clear. I was pretty certain he saw it. If you rewatch the stream, you'll see that it was certainly within where he could have seen it. I don't think Zayim lied. I think he just didn't look at it, but he had drawn it close enough to where he could see it. I said, you know, I can't, I can't say that you didn't see it. It definitely looked like you see it. I think the rules are, in which case, you're going to reveal the card and put it back on top. He agreed revealed the card put it back on top it ended up not mattering but that's just the way the rules are so the my point being that is in that case a caution if you drew an extra card and it was two turns ago that's a warning and that's a very serious warning um and if that re if that were to repeat we'd look at a disqualification does that make sense mm -hmm. um so the way it goes in this game is you have a caution, a warning, what they call a de an instant defeat, which means you just lose, and then a um, being dropped from the tournament. Um, being dropped from the tournament is where you could possibly end up not being in, allowed to play in Square Enix events anymore. So mm -hmm. that is the highest form of punishment, very similar to the way the magic works. Um, warnings, again, are issued when you cannot fix the game state. If the game state's fixable, we'll issue a caution. Mm -hmm. If it was malicious, then you're almost certainly getting a disqualification if we can prove it. If it if 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 it if it's cheating, does that make sense? Yeah. So, I think that wraps up all the questions. Did you have any questions, Zach, that you were wondering about the event? Nope. Nope. That was easy then. <laughs> good. Good. Um, thank you for for joining us. Uh, I've been your host, Sam Snipe Prime, and I've been Zach Brown, and we will see you next time. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CardiVillies.com and use promo code Chuckle Bros to get 10% off your next order.